it's, it's so unfair that the mainstream is giving us like less than half of the story. The thesis of this video is that even though mainstream self-help and spiritual self-help does teach a lot of really life-changing things, it still ultimately fails us because it either completely leaves out or has problematic takes on how abuse works and on how trauma works. I'm going to mainly be using the four agreements to illustrate the point I'm making. This is inspired by the fact that I'm currently rereading the four agreements. I read it for the first time when the new year was becoming 2022. It helped save my relationship, which was currently in a no contact break at the time. And this book, as well as another book, this one, Attached, it's about attachment science. This is a huge relationship saver. These books, especially this one, completely saved my relationship. Mainly the similarity between these two and why they both helped is because they emphasize direct communication, effective direct communication, rather than making assumptions. Direct and effective communication is not something that we normally have in our culture, our families and relationships, and I cannot stress enough how much of a game changer that book attached was. I feel like it is literally the antidote to all the toxic, horrible, mainstream dating advice that's out there, such as pretending like you don't care and not answering to see if they'll come to you. Like that is all just like game playing and, but that's a whole other tangent. So back to the point of this video. So the four agreements themselves are actually so brilliant and I found a lot of happiness, peace and liberation from living by the four agreements since I read this book the first time. And I'll just read you what the basic agreements are. The first one is be impeccable with your word, speak with integrity, say only what you mean, avoid using the word to speak against yourself or to gossip about others, use the power of your word in the direction of truth and love. The second one is don't take anything personally, nothing others do is because of you. What others say and do is a projection of their own reality, their own dream. When you are immune to the opinions and actions of others, you won't be the victim of needless suffering. Now this agreement actually in the chapter has something very problematic that I will get to. The third agreement is don't make assumptions. Find the courage to ask questions and to express what you really want. Communicate with others as clearly as you can to avoid misunderstandings, sadness, and drama. With just this one agreement, you can completely transform your life. So life-changing. The last agreement is always do your best. Your best is going to change from moment to moment. It will be different when you are healthy as opposed to sick. Under any circumstance, simply do your best and you will avoid self-judgment, self-abuse, and regret. Which is basically like self-compassion, which is another book. Really, really awesome book. I haven't read it in a while, so I don't remember if there's anything problematic in it, but the basic idea of self-compassion, you can't go wrong with that. Tripping on magic mushrooms literally has healed me more than anything else could ever be capable of. And one of the first things I learned on my first trip was that I have to stop putting others on a pedestal and listening to everyone else on how to feel about things and just listening to others so much more than listening to myself. So I cannot look at these books in the ways that I used to where I'm looking up at these authors as if they have some better access to spiritual truth I don't have access to, you know? So with that, I'm rereading this book quite honestly feeling like even though the four agreements themselves are brilliant, the descriptions that the author puts of them are very oversimplified in my opinion. And I'm just gonna read two sentences that are so problematic within the second agreement. If you have the need to be abused, you will find it easy to be abused by others. Likewise, if you are with people who need to suffer, something in you makes you abuse them. Do I even need to explain how horrible these two sentences are? Now there is room for some nuance and some of the points kind of made in the chapter about this being like having truth to them, but these two sentences though are like disgusting. <laughs> 
that first sentence is just victim blaming. Like we need to throw out this idea in the self-help spiritual community that we manifest or attract our abusers or that it's the victim's fault in any way when they are abused. It's nobody's fault but the abuser. Like that should just be like, duh. You don't attract abusers. Abusers seek out people who do not recognize and detect their red flag behaviors. And as soon as they realize that, they push the boundaries more and more to see what they can do. And then they figure out that you're a person who probably was raised in abuse, so you're used to it and you don't see anything wrong with it. And that is how they find you. It is not the other way around. And might I say having the need to be abused is a contradiction with nothing is personal? As in, how can someone abuse you because you have the need to be abused, yet their abuse of you is also not personal? Like, is that not a contradiction? Can Does anyone agree like that's a blatant contradiction? Back in 2019, I read a few of the Abraham Hicks books. And again, great teachings. However, their take on abusive relationships if I, I can't, I don't have a copy, so I don't know the exact quote, but it was basically like, um, if a wife is being abused by her husband, she just has to stop believing he will abuse her. She has to stop expecting him to come home and abuse her, and then he'll just stop. Like, such a dangerous, like, ignorant thing to teach. The idea that you can manifest the behavior of other people or even the feelings of them or any of that is toxic. And when you are a victim of abuse or you grow up in a toxic family and you're the one who heals and changes and all you want to do is heal and change and fix others, there's so many people like that out in the world. And I used to be one of those people. And there's people online all the time that exploit those people. There's tarot readers online that give people the idea that they can manifest someone who's already said they don't like them romantically into liking them romantically. Like others have free will. I forgot to explain that the healthy and legitimate way to manifest a romantic partner is to realize there's so many people in this world that whatever your values and criteria for how you want to be treated and what values you want to share and what kind of person you want to be with and hopefully you don't make this list from your ego but from a soul place anyway there's a person at least one that already exists that fits that description and it's more about getting yourself right and attracting that already existing person that is how you manifest a partner, not trying to impede on the free will of others. That sadly includes the free will to never change, to never heal, to never apologize, own up, take responsibility, any of that. And that I think is probably the hardest thing about being on the spiritual, awakened, higher consciousness, or even just mindful, decent human being path. <laughs> And there's people in this world, be it because of their own trauma being so bad, their own ego just doubling down so bad or whatever it is, don't waste your time trying to figure out why, okay? But there are some people who just are like not capable of changing or having a healthy relationship or they just refuse to put in the work. And it's just something that you should take all that energy back and put it on yourself and towards your life's endeavors and the loved ones in your life who do treat you with healthy respect and genuine actual love. So focusing back on that first sentence, there are books by people like Dr. Joe Dispenza who talk about how the toxic brain chemicals of fighting with people or just having conflicts and being harmed and mistreated by people those toxic brain chemicals are addictive. So in that sense, there is some truth to it. You are so used to it, it's so familiar, you get addicted to bathing in those chemicals and in your nervous system being triggered, it's just normal for you and it feels very uncomfortable to not have that. 
However, in my experience, I only read, I got the title wrong, it's Breaking the Habit of Being Yourself by Joe Dispenza. That's the book I read by him. He does not seem to teach anything valuable about actually healing trauma from its root. Now, if you want a book that doesn't just say, good luck, stop being this way after they describe the addictive brain chemicals um, and all of that stuff, then read The Body Keeps This Score. This is the only book that I've found so far that actually gives real effective healing methods for trauma. These are like some basic, really hard, unavoidable facts about awakening and healing. One, you can't really do it unless you get away from people who are actively abusing you. And two, you're not gonna get very far beyond a surface level understanding and practice of all these spiritual ideas like being present and just all the stuff that these books ever talk about unless you heal your trauma. Like those are just, just accept those truths. These most famous books of this category like The Four Agreements and The Power of Now, they don't have a section on how you actually heal trauma. In mainstream spirituality, people talk about daily meditation, reprogramming the subconscious mind with affirmations and hypnosis and choosing higher consciousness. I did all of that on the daily for five years and I still do and it does it has effectiveness and it does help a lot and it can make you awaken and make positive changes in your life but I never had a real breakthrough like a real one until I tripped on magic mushrooms. I know what it's like to not struggle with my mental health because of magic mushrooms solely. I have magic mushroom trip reports on my channel if you would like to hear my experiences, but I just encourage you to do proper, safe, informed, effective research on the topic. I'm not an expert, but I can't withhold what is your human right to know about. <laughs> I also want to say when I read The Power of Now, I'd already been meditating and spiritual for years and yet I just never really quite experienced what it's like to be present in the way that is described in the book and I never did until I tripped on magic mushrooms and I just feel like it's not fair that these mainstream teachings and books expect you to feel these ways when you probably don't have access to feeling these ways because you haven't healed your trauma first. There's such a huge difference too between reading or being told something or in the logical mind being like, oh, that makes sense, and actually understanding it when you're on a psychedelic trip. It's a whole other thing I can't even put into words, but I just, it's so unfair that the mainstream is giving us like, less than half of the story. And that is why I think so many of the people in this world kind of come across this and just write it off and it just doesn't work for them. And whether it's mushrooms or a different plant medicine or even um, EMDR, which is where you just watch someone's finger while they ask you questions and you don't even have to say them out loud, but that allows your brain to revisit a trauma. Basically what has to happen is you have to revisit the trauma, fully feel the feelings that you didn't allow when it happened and accept the truth of it, accept that it happened in the past. And that is just something you can't just be like, oh, this happened in the past. This is the truth, I accept that. You can't just like logically say that and just you know, you ha it ha it's very deep. I don't know how to explain it, but basically talk therapy and reliving it over and over just by talking about it doesn't do anything. Like, the only thing it does, it allows you to get validated, which if you've never been validated by someone else about your experience, then that's useful. But beyond that, that's pretty much as far as that goes. And cognitive behavioral therapy, where you get exposed constantly to whatever your trigger is until you supposedly don't get triggered by it anymore, also doesn't work. It just re-traumatizes you and stresses you out. Um, but before I go on too long of a tangent, just read the body, keeps the score. Oh, and the last thing I'll say when I just said I was gonna move on, but um, things like depression, even things like OCD and ADHD and all, bipolar and all these things that we've given these names and diagnostics to, the 
people who have diagnosed uh, mental health concerns, they refuse to allow um, childhood trauma to be in the diagnostics. You can conspiracy theory your way to why that might be. <laughs> um, I would say it's because that's actually the real cause of all these things and that's kind of what they talk about in the book and if we were all aware that trauma, especially childhood trauma, is the cause of all these mental health issues and stop just being like, oh, you're just ADHD, take a pill, and we just like healed our trauma, then pharmaceuticals wouldn't make a lot of money. But again, like, <laughs> we're gonna move on. So that second problematic sentence, if you are with people who need to suffer, something in you makes you abuse them. Like, sorry, I can't relate. I don't harm others. I don't abuse others. <laughs> like, what? Who even says this? Like, sorry, but I could be around a person who's used to being abused and has been their whole life and does not set any boundaries or cut off any ties with all the people that abuse them. And I still am not going to abuse them myself. Like... I know people like this and yet there is not something in me that just takes over and makes me abuse them. That's ridiculous. This sentence allows the notion of not taking personal responsibility for how you treat others and that is just fucked. That is not okay. There is no justification for victim blaming, gaslighting victims, and taking zero responsibility for harming others. <laughs> That has no place in spirituality. Like how obvious can I outline this for you? There is no excuse for harming others at all, but especially if you're a spiritual high vibe person and nothing high vibe happens in a slaughterhouse. Can you actually be high vibe and spiritual and love and peace if you're paying for unnecessary violence? Just like, can you? No. So watch the free documentary Dominion on YouTube to see the reality of what happens for meat, dairy, eggs, and seafood. The dairy industry takes baby cows away from their mothers after birth and kills the baby cows that are born male. They then slaughter all of the cows when they no longer produce enough milk. The egg industry grinds up baby male chicks alive because they're not gonna grow up to lay eggs, and they slaughter all of the hens when they no longer lay enough eggs. The main way to kill pigs for pork is in a carbon dioxide gas chamber where they scream and burn from the inside out and thrash so hard that they often detach their hooves from their bodies. It is known and proven that fish feel pain and don't even get me started on the havoc that dragging out trillions of marine life causes on the ocean and to the marine life. Obviously, they're suffocated to death, they're stabbed and beaten to death. So see my description as well as evidence on why we don't need animal products, peer-reviewed scientific evidence. And listen to the TEDx talk, Every Argument Against Veganism. So less obviously problematic, but another problematic area in this second agreement is when he says, Miguel, what you say, what are you are saying is hurting me, but it is not what I'm saying that is hurting you. It is that you have wounds that I have touched by what I have said. You are hurting yourself. Ugh, so at worst, this could be literally gaslighting someone. You know, this allows so much room to gaslight people for their very valid feelings and responses when you mistreat them and like verbally abuse them. Like you can say things that are hurtful, that's valid. Don't do that, like <laughs> there's no excuse for that. And this leaves room for you to just do that as much as you want and just be like, oh, well, if anyone is hurt by it, it's just simply not my responsibility. That's just like, what? You can argue that because of the first agreement, which is to not use your word to be harmful over others, that whatever he has said that has hurt someone's feelings was not verbally abusive or purposely hurtful. But at the same time, you can still say things that you have no idea could or would ever be hurtful and they can still be so hurtful to someone else. And you can't just, if you value your relationship with that person at all, you can't just be like, well, too bad you took it personal and that's not my problem. You know, you gotta be like, oh, okay. And you have to respect their boundary and not 
say those things. So that's probably like the best possible interpretation of this, but it's just so oversimplified that it leaves so much room for all these problems. I mean, there is room for truth about the fact that like, um, if you don't believe something about yourself, like if you don't believe you're a failure, a lot of people can tell you you're a failure and it won't really hurt you, but at the same time, it still is shitty. You still don't want to hear that if you had the choice. And at the end of the day, no matter how much you know you're not a failure, if someone like close to you, like your parent says you are, even though no matter how much you know it's not true, it's still going to be hurtful because it's still like this person who's supposed to love me is doing the opposite of loving me. And I don't care how like whatever you are, that's shitty and hurtful and it doesn't have any place or excuse. So basically it is true, we do have power and we can take our power back if we're being abused by others. We always have the ability to leave somehow. Of course, sometimes it's physically dangerous, sometimes there's kids involved, although you should never stay with an abuser for the kids, that's only gonna do more harm than good. But I understand people are financially tied to people and don't have somewhere to go and it's, it's there's nuance to that, but it should be the main priority of your life to get away from an abuser. And like I said before, you really can't heal or awaken or progress past a very surface spiritual bypassing level if you don't at least do that basic first step. And you do have the power to set boundaries and treat others how to treat you. Even awakening to the fact that you are being abused and mistreated is its own awakening, but it's so worth it. Like, you have to learn about these things, and once you do, and if you have the willingness to want to get out of these situations, like, that's where it truly starts. Have a happy, beautiful, peaceful day in life. Bye!